Hi everyone, join us today as we make these air dry clay jewelry dishes. As you can see, I really love rich, colorful pieces. These would fit in right at a craft show and somehow they seem to match what we sell in person at craft and comic shows. Welcome to our channel. I'm Tanner and this is my wife Amy. If you haven't seen us before, Amy and I are full-time artists who make a wide range of items using a variety of different materials. Have you ever wanted to make your own clay dishes but didn't have access to a kiln? Today, Amy's going to walk you through how to do that. This air dry clay is fairly durable, so it makes a great gift or even a display at your booth. In this video, Amy's going to show you how to make a variety of different air dry clay dishes. Let's get on to the supplies. Most of these can be found at your local craft store, Michael's, or on Amazon. You will need air hardening modeling clay. There are lots of brands available. These are my favorite ones. I like the Mott Marte brand. The details show up really well on most of the items I've tried making, and most crafters have seen the DAS brand in craft stores. On the back of these packages is a resealable tab sticker you can use to seal your bag in between uses. Find a variety of bowls. You can use just about any bowl to shape your dishes while they dry. You'll need an X-Acto knife to cut your clay. I'm going to show you how you can use a ruler to cut your designs as well and grab a pair of scissors to adjust any templates you want to use. Next, you'll need a rolling pin. This is one I use for my mellow clay work. It's non-stick, but you can also use an empty glass jar or even a bottle. I'm going to use some stamps for texturing these pieces, but you can also use lace or doilies to add any kind of texture to yours. The stamps I use are just for card making. You can also add permanent ink to these stamps and leave images on the dishes. I use this stays on for a lot of my projects, which works well on polymer clay, metal, and other items. Here are my stencils I cut out with my Cricut. You can use anything, even cookie cutters, to cut out your dish. If you don't have a Cricut, you can quickly draw these out onto cardstock and cut the image out with a pair of scissors. This is actually my daughter's clay kit I'm going to use. I got it off Amazon and it was pretty affordable and has held up for over a year of weekly use. I use some of these tools to carve my own textures in the clay. You can use leatherworking stamps as well. Just make sure you clean them very well before using them on your next leatherworking project or when you dye the item, you'll have an area of leather that the dye does not adhere to. You'll need a cutting mat to cut out your designs. You'll also need sandpaper or a rotary tool like a Dremel to sand your work, which I will go over in its own section so you can see what's right for you. Also grab some water and some paper towels. Depending on how large you want to make your dish will determine how big of a chunk of clay to grab. If you find your clay drying out, add a couple drops of water and knead it together. So I start by kneading the clay into a ball and roughly making a pancake shape. And then I take my roller and start to roll it out to the size of my template. I keep flipping it over and over and rolling it so the clay does not stick to the mat. The minimum thickness I would go for a dish is about four millimeters. If you go too much thinner, you risk breaking your pieces. You can always go thicker as well. I'm using this wood grain stamp for my maple leaf. The stamp will not make a deep imprint. I'm going to trim the template so it fits on the stamp. Otherwise, I would have to stamp it multiple times to get a texture on the entire piece. Now you can see the texture is not that deep. That's okay, I was hoping for just a bit of texture. If you want more, then you'd need to look for a deep groove stamp like this one. Now fit where you want your template to go and cut around the template with your knife. Take any extra clay pieces and wrap them in plastic or add them to your original package. I try to avoid opening and closing the bag as much as possible, so I just wrap it in plastic so I can access it easily and keep the main package fresh.
Any rounded metal tip shaping tool can be used to smooth out the edges and the cracks. It's up to you about how rough you want to leave your edges. I like an in-between look where it still has some character, but most of the cracks are gone. I just add a little bit of water to the metal part and smooth it down. You can also use your fingers to smooth the edges down. If you want a smooth edge, it's better to do it now in this stage rather than the sanding stage because it's less time consuming and it doesn't create the dust. Find the dish you want to use to shape your piece. Center it and start to gently push down. This clay is surprisingly durable and stretchy feeling. And it feels similar to some of the doughs you can make when baking. You can do any final smoothing you want. And you can take your small metal tools and add any extra texture, if you like. I'm going to show you another leaf bowl. This one is going to be larger and hand carved. For larger dishes, shape the clay roughly in the shape of the template, then roll it out. Don't forget to flip it often. Before you cut, you will want to add any textures. With the metal rounded end, you can add a bit of water and slowly drag it back and forth to make the lines. If you find your clay wrinkling or cracking when you do this, add just a little bit more water. I'm going to bevel these edges with a larger rounded tool. Make sure you carefully pick the item up slowly so your piece won't crack or tear. Since this is a large piece, you'll need a larger bowl. I had to carefully put it down in the dish. I put my large last one in crooked and I had to take it back out and it tore. The next dish we are going to do is going to be stamped with ink. Let's see how this turns out and see how we're going to paint it. Here's what the stamp looks like. There isn't quite enough ink, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to cut around this dish and use it to shape it as well. So let's form our clay out to roughly about the size of the dish and then roll it. Cover your stamp in ink and press it into the clay. Don't press too hard or the ink may smudge. Here's what it looks like. I got a bit of purple on here from a previous project, so I will probably make the dish purple. Now find where you want to center your stamp on your dish, press down slightly and cut around it. Smooth out your edges a bit and fold slightly to press into the dish. And keep pressing until it hits the bottom. For the next example, if your stamp is smaller than your template, just repeat the stamp. I'm doing this flower template to cut around it. Because the remaining clay has lots of ink in it now, the clay will no longer be white. You can add in some dye, pigments, or just paint over it when you use the rest of the clay. Because the stamp is going all the way to the edge and has some deep grooves, there will be roughness on the edge. You can decide if you want to smooth it out or keep this look. I will make our final project from terracotta clay. This clay seems to be a little bit more wet feeling and can lose some of the texture if you don't make that image deep enough. Or if you don't have a stamp that has a deep enough groove. I also noticed this clay cracks a little easier, so I just make a slip with a bit of clay and water and add it right back in. You can also do this once the clay is dry as well. And you just fill the cracks in with a bit of clay and water mixture and let it dry. This is another large stamp. So make the size slightly bigger than the area and push down hard into the clay. Make sure you push all the areas of the stamp so everything is textured evenly. Because this has straight lines, I like to use a thin beveled ruler. I can quickly cut the edges off and there is little sanding or smoothing to do. 
I just use the bevel part towards the edge and it acts like a knife. You can use this as a dish or you can leave it flat and make it into a coaster. Carefully form this clay into a dish. So it took about four days for the pieces to fully dry. You can tell if they are dry if they have a uniform color with no dark spots. A darker spot means it's slightly wet in the area. Now I will go into a bit about sanding your dishes. For this I strongly recommend a ventilated area, particulate mass, and eye protection. If you are doing light or minimal sanding, a simple dust mask may work. When using a rotary tool, little bits of clay can fly off and hit you in the eye. So I always wear eye protection. You never want to breathe in any type of dust. Depending on how well you smooth out your pieces in the forming stages will depend on if you have to sand your pieces at all or if you want to just keep the handmade characteristics. There are lots of available sanding paper and pads. Some brands might have their own grit measurements. Look for fine to super fine or around 220 to 320 grit for light or minimal sanding. If your clay is fairly rough, you can use coarse or medium grit sandpaper, which is rated from 100 to 200 grit, and then you can smooth it out with a higher grit. There are lots of rotary tools out there. I actually happen to have five of my own. It was a popular birthday gift one year and everyone got me a different version. This is the most basic one and you can switch your ends to different size of mandrels. I have these two kits here. They have lots of attachments. You can even add holes to your pieces and carve in more detailed designs. You'll also need a brush to remove any bits of clay or dust. Now let's get into sanding. I'm going to hold this a little bit awkwardly for this video so I can show you how I'm sanding the pieces. If you're using a rotary tool, you'll want to make sure any long hair is out of the way and tie back. Securely hold onto your tool in one hand and the piece in the other. There are gadgets where you can secure your rotary to a stand and use it sort of as a hands-free sanding, but I couldn't find mine to show you. So you'll want to just follow along the piece carefully. This can take quite a bit of clay off without a lot of pressure against the dish. Alternatively, you can even use a drill with a sanding attachment as well. If you're doing both the white clay and terracotta, do the terracotta last if you don't want to paint your white pieces as the terracotta transfers just a little bit onto the white pieces with the sanding attachments. If you're going to just use sandpaper, start with your desired grit and start smoothing out any marks. This final step is pretty important or it will discolor your paint and add unwanted gunk to your paint. Grab a brush with stiff bristles and brush off any dust on top and the bottom of your pieces. Now we are ready for painting. Grab a couple bowls of water and something to mix your paint on. You probably even have a lid to a container you don't know what happened to hanging around your cupboard. If anyone knows the answer to where those missing items go, let me know in the comments. What we'll need for painting is some acrylic paint. You can use just about any kind of acrylic, but I have had some acrylic paints where the paint did not stick. If you are worried about a certain paint not sticking, make a small test piece ahead of time and try it. And recently I got these Montmartre paints. They mostly don't need to be thinned out for clay and the pre colors are actually pretty nice. I also have some gold foil I might want to use but I'm not sure on white yet. Grab a variety of paintbrushes. Even the bristly hard ones can be used to make some texture or spray on paint. And grab a sponge you can cut up into small pieces. For finishing your pieces, I'm just going to use Mod Podge and apply about maybe three to five coats. To make the piece waterproof, you'll want to use some varnish in a well-ventilated or outdoor space. I don't use them very often as I can't handle the chemical smell. Also, varnish for woodworking works pretty well too, but the smell remains on the item for a long time. Here are the dry pieces. I accidentally got some marks on this leaf when I went to adjust it during the drying process. It's metallic paint, so we'll see if we can cover that up completely. I also did an extra one of the cathedral and leaf dishes. I did this as an example to show you just about any of these items could be made into a coaster. And you can put something like this varnish which will waterproof it. I am using wax paper to set down on my workspace so I don't get paint all over my table. I'm going to start with this stamp small bowl. Since it was some color transfer from the stamp, 
I'm going to do it purple. I'm using a heavy body paint so I need to thin it out a bit so I can paint the smaller details. You may need to do two coats. Once it's dry you can paint the bottom. The next one I'm going to show you is this leaf. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet. Perhaps an antique look. I'm going to start thinning out some dark green and covering the whole piece and letting it dry. I did blend the brush strokes with a sponge so there were no noticeable brush strokes. I wanted to add a bit of shimmer so I thinned out some metallic paint and sponged it on top and left it to dry. I went to grab the leaf dish and I accidentally knocked the gold foil onto it. While trying to get rid of it, I got some other paint on the edges, so I decided just to blend it in with some dark green. I couldn't get off the couple pieces of gold foil, so I may add more gold foil later. I also added the same green, but only slightly thinned from the first coat, with just a sponge around the outside edge of the dish. You can use a stiff brush and further blend it into the paint as well. For this square dish, I'm going to sponge on a lighter metallic blue. I'm going to let that dry and move on to my metallic silver stamp flower dish. I want the metallic ink stamp to show through a bit, and so I'm just going to blend the outside with more paint. I've thinned out the blue, added it, and now I'm going to wipe off the blue with my sponge and remove some of the paint in the center. Now I'm going to add some darker color around the edges and blend it in. I'm going to take this harder brush and flick on some dark blue paint. This entire dish was done with only one color of paint. I didn't use anything else other than water to get this look. Now back to the cathedral dish. I'm going to use the same blue and thin it out to a wash. This is so the wash stays in the details of the stamp. You can add it and then quickly wipe off the raised parts, leaving the grooves with color. I'm also going to use a small amount of blue and use a thin paintbrush to further add details. After it completely dries, I'm going to add more details to the dish. Now onto the maple leaf. Of course I have to make it red. I start with a lighter red, cover it, and then I try to blend in a bit of blue to make a darker red for the outside edges. I like to use a small bit of sponge to blend in the colors, then take my bristle brush to add in a bit more dark red. For the terracotta piece, I like the natural color of it, so I'm just going to add some highlights in red and bronze. For the final leaf, I wanted it to have a copper patina or aged metal look, so I used a rose gold paint, let it dry, and mixed some black and rose gold together and sponged around the outside. I further blended it with copper metallic paint and then sprinkled it with copper with my bristle brush. I just kept blending until I was happy with it. Here are the final pieces. I added more gold foil to the green leaf and some white accents to the blue dish. After they are completely dry, you can add your finish. I'm going to add Mod Podge. You can use an old paintbrush to apply it, and make sure there are no large clumps of glue around the edges. Allow about two to three hours between each coat for it to fully dry, and then you can add another. And don't forget to do the bottom as well. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and it inspires you to make something awesome. Please share your creations in the comments below and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials and information about the craft business. We'll see you next time.